Hello Cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club and welcome to our channel. If this is your first time visiting, welcome and if it's not, welcome back. We are so happy you have joined us. Now, I'm going to say welcome to my craft room too as I talk about the garden. It's thundering and raining and you might you know, well be thinking what's new. So I'm kind of stuck indoors and the kitchen is in chaos as I have lights and cameras and piles of ingredients everywhere to film some $2 dinner videos. So the craft room was the most convenient spot. Okay, well, a month goes quickly and here it is late spring and the garden just isn't thriving the way I would like it to. We've had so much rain that the garden is still sodden, but on the upside, it means I'm not watering. <laughs> the rain barrels are full. The weather is very slowly warming up and I really need, you really need, we all really need to get the summer garden finished. This week we had a couple of dryish days. Now I say dryish because it didn't rain a lot, but the ground's really saturated so it doesn't take a lot of rain to make it wet. I'm so thankful for my new gum boots because walking around the yard is a squishy challenge and even the raised beds that had plenty of drainage, they are just soaked too. And the pots are so wet that a couple of them just weren't draining. They were just waterlogged. I thought there was blockages. No, they were just so wet. So I've moved those pots under the veranda to give them time to drain and hopefully dry out a little. Oh, I remember I asked about my lavender. Well, I've come to the conclusion that the ground is just too wet and it's the water that's killing them. I've never seen our backyard so wet. And all the time we've been in this house, the backyard has never been this wet. And of course, if you throw in some fierce winds over the last few days, everything is just should be drying out and it's not because as fast as it, the wind comes up, down comes the rain, it's chaos. Anyway. The wind has also not been kind to my fruit trees because while the blossom on the ground looks really, really pretty, it's supposed to be on my trees to set fruit. I've moved my fruit, uh, my fruit tree, my peach tree in under the veranda to protect it uh, from the wind because it has a lot of peaches on it. And I threw some netting over it this morning to protect it from birds you remember last year I was so excited to get peaches on this tree at last and then we had that massive storm and all but two blew off and I, I was heartbroken peaches are my favorite fruit so free peaches suit me just fine um, I do not want that happening again and we have had pests I think I found what the problem was I saw a rat a few nights ago at least I think it was a rat too small for a possum it was running along the top railing of the back fence and solar light picked it up so that could be what is eating my veggies anyway baits are hard with lacy dog coming here but i did get some throw down packs and i tossed them down between the raised beds and the sheds where lacy can't fit and then i toss them behind my garden shed and anywhere I could find that lacy dog would not fit to get them and then of course straight away the next morning I was in the sheds to see if, if a rat had been to visit and so far there's no sign all the all the packets are intact but I'm thinking that perhaps it's just too wet in the bush because the bush behind us is absolutely soaked and I think maybe it's too wet and it's come out to dry off and try and find somewhere not quite so soggy to live and it's decided our backyard is it. Hopefully it will go away soon because I am not fond of rats. So what am I planting in November? Well succession planting is the goal so that there will be a continual harvest of most things right through spring and summer and hopefully fingers crossed into autumn so this time with the planting there are some seeds I'm going to start in little peat pots I meant to bring one in but I haven't 
forgot. I've never tried them before, so this is a first for me. They sound great in theory, and if they work, then they may become a garden staple. Although I really do prefer to direct sow when I can, but it's just been too wet. I have more lettuce, because we just go through lettuce at this time of year, and silver beet seeds to plant, silver beet. It's versatile, folks. And then there's some tomato and capsicum seedlings to plant out too. And then next week, um, eggplant seedlings will be ready to plant out. And if we've got tomatoes, eggplant capsicums, we've got focaccia filling. Yes, I'm thinking about um, starting more zucchini, perhaps another four, strictly for preserving. Because zucchini is fantastic grated and used in fritters or cake batters or pasta sauce and so on. And if you grate it and dehydrate it, it is a good shelf stable addition to your pantry. Really versatile again, because you can just toss a handful into a soup or a stew. It adds nutrition and it thickens it up if you need to thicken it up. It might be a pasta sauce or something that needs to be thickened up without changing the taste because zucchini is quite bland. The other thing is you can powder it and use it in your cooking and baking too. And so some of it will be powdered, dehydrated and powdered and just tossed in the green jar. My raspberries are all leafing up. They all look beautiful. And each cane is covered in teeny tiny little green raspberries. I'm really hoping for a bumper crop this year for raspberry jam because that's my favourite. And as long as the wind and rain don't do any damage, that will happen. The big apple tree, my big apple tree out the front is covered in blossom. And it looks so, so pretty. And the smell, oh my gosh, who remembers the old fashioned perfume, apple blossom? And the bees, you open the front door and you can hear this buzzing and it is the bees in the apple tree and of course the lemon the lime the orange the mandarins are all covered in blossom too so you walk out the back and you just get this whiff this scent just takes over and therefore it's going to be a nice addition to the pantry i will say i am disappointed in my strawberries though i'm not sure what's happened but they are just drying up and shriveling up I don't know what the problem is. It could be too wet for them too. Uh, they could be too old. Although even the plants that I started last summer are looking very sad. What else happened? I've turned one of the bigger raised beds into a herb garden of sorts because I still have the little, the little pots for herbs. Because fresh herbs are expensive. And I use a lot of them in my cooking and baking and preserving. So... Sort of makes sense to grow them if you can. I have rosemary and thyme in pots. Just beautiful. You brush past the rosemary, it smells divine. And I have been picking it and using it on our roast veggies. But I've planted more parsley, um, chives, sweet basil, and oregano in the bigger bed. And then I've got, of course, the garlic in the pots. Well, that's our herb basic herb basics covered so that should be good my aim is to grow enough to use fresh while they last and hopefully have excess to dehydrate for winter we do use a lot of rosemary we use a lot of oregano we use a lot of sweet basil in our house so if i can grow what we need it just makes sense especially if we're going to live on our 1994 budget <laughs> um the lavender out the front is in bloom. Totally different um, soil and ground to what's out the back. It is just stunning. Now these were tiny little plants that I put in earlier this year and they've just taken off. Now I've picked a lot of um, a lot of these plants to dry and to make lavender water for ironing. I figure if I'm going to iron, I may as well enjoy it and use a little lavender aromatherapy to keep me relaxed while I'm doing it. I think that's about it for now. 
as always, gardening is a constant. It's an ongoing project. There's always little things that need to be done. Um, weeds to be pulled, bushes to be trimmed, trees to be looked after, fertilising to do. So I may do a garden update later in the month if I get time. Just to let you know how it's going. Because I know so many of you actually want to see the garden and I'm really flattered that you are interested because I am absolutely no expert. I'm, I'm a bit of a try it and see type of gardener. But the garden is part of my pantry and you know how I am about my pantry. It's private and it's for my eyes only. Now right, not, right now, um, for a few reasons, I'm taking our personal security very seriously. So there won't be any garden videos. I may share a photo or two, but I'll have to think about it. Um, like I say, keep your pantry private. And that's, I'm really focusing on that at the moment for a lot of reasons. Anyway, before I go, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share. These three things, like, subscribe, share, really boost our channel and make it easier to find. And when it's easier to find, it's easier for us to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life get free, cashed up and laughing, but entirely and absolutely possible, even in today's crazy world. So until next time, everyone, happy cheapskating and happy gardening.